Hey everybody, I am down here in the cellar, currently looking uh, for a place to uh, balance ye old camera, or phone, which is a camera I suppose, as well. So I'm putting a towel up on the toolbox. I want to put this bamboo box in it and see if I can balance. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Let me see if I can shore up so it doesn't fall so easily. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'll take you over here now, but uh, I think I'll send you back there. So I've just been uh, down here uh, cleaning uh, the Buddhas. And uh, there, it's quite amazing, huh? Look at that Buddha. There's a Buddha. <clears throat> And a mudra you may recognize from clippings. And uh, so I'm uh, just down here uh, uh, cleaning the Buddha and, and sealing them, putting like a stone sealer on them so that uh, they last. And uh, uh, hopefully that will let you see the workspace fairly. And uh, so anyway, when I do this, uh, 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 I make a meditation, and uh, so I thought I'd share that with you. Um, it's uh, kind of the, the, the way that I'll uh, uh, meditate uh, doing anything that I'm trying to sanctify or, or uh, respect the sanctity of or what have you. And uh, so, this Buddha, uh, I'll tell you a few things that kind of come to mind. Um, one is uh, this idea that I've long had, uh, I have not done, but the idea, I suppose I can leave right there where you can see. Hey, sweetie. Um, The idea is uh, to uh, have a bunch of images of uh, holy people, saints, or you know whatever the right term is. I, I don't come at it from a religious point of view, but I'll just say saints, so you have the idea. And uh, with very little contextualization, perhaps no prose, or very little, maybe a little poetry, I'm not sure, but just have the images of their faces. I feel like you can fall into the face of somebody who's awake in those ways. And I think there's uh, there's plenty guru left in just an image of a guru. Uh, and so even with the statuary, I'll kind of spend some time looking into the face. Not that I'm coming to believe it's the actual being or anything like that, but just letting myself into that visage, uh, which is really quite literally a darshan. And uh, so, so really what I want to do is just kind of um, cultivate a sense of uh, real presence. Uh, and uh, I actually have my uh, ear pods in because I had been uh, listening to sacred music while I was cleaning. Uh, but I don't think I'll do that while I'm meditating with you. But I was kind of chanting as I did it. Uh, but the, the practice is uh, one of uh, cultivating presence uh, and then a, a, a state of lovingness um, so that my connection to the process, to the products that I'm using, you know, if it's the soap or the sponge or what have you, and obviously the statuary, um, is, is very much as if I'm in the physical presence of the guru. You know, so how would you behave if your guru was in the room? You might actually find yourself washing their feet or uh, fetching them food or something uh, fairly mundane like that. But the way that you do it, uh, uh, we would expect would be highly uh, uh, humble, loving, generous, quiet, attentive, present. And that, that's kind of the state that I'm trying to get in. So I don't know how much it'll look like in meditation, but I'll bet if we were scanning my brainwaves, we'd see 
you know, the theta switch uh, uh, through that process, or probably right at the outset. So anyway, uh, it looks like we're still in frame, so uh, we'll uh, begin to address this Buddha. Excuse me, sweetie. So I know it's just a piece of stone. I'm addressing it like I'm cleaning, you know, maybe the way you might clean the clothes of your firstborn on their first day of school, you know, just tending to every bit of schmutz or every bit of lint. So I'm not treating this the way I might just, I don't know, washing something else where you just kind of just looking at the surface area and making sure you do your job. But cultivating a sense of lovingness, gentleness, presence. And one of the qualities that I feel is that it feels like what comes into flower is a sense of patience. Uh, I can imagine that somebody else's child that's delaying, you know, in line ahead of you, for example. It might not be natural or very easy to have a sense of patience. You just think that they're slowing the line up. But if, it, you're, if it's your kid, you'll be patient, I'm thinking, but you won't even notice that you're patient. You'll just think it's adorable or it's cute or you have this urge to help them you know, get the gum out of their hair or whatever it happens to be. Whereas if it happened in line in front, you might be like, come on kid, get out of line, or what's the hold up, or why can't you take care of your kid, or what have you. And so it feels to me like the patience is this byproduct of this presence. I start to really lovingly tend to, you know, what thought state, what psyche shift would allow a hand to find this shape, or find, allow a heart to hold this much joy, you know, where you kind of go across and you think, boy, I don't see one worry line. I know it's not an actual person, it's a statue, so you can carve away these things or not introduce them or uh, polish them away. But isn't that just what our practice is? It's polishing these things away or carving into our personality and practice our tools and tactics for healthier insight and understanding in life presence. So, you know, as I do this, may really 
really starting to see like, look at that smile, you know. And, and again, I, I know it's a statue, right? It's not going to change, but start to look at it as now it's a real being, you know. Not that I think this statue is alive, but like a real being like this, like like this is just Suka, the statue, you know. And it's a very interesting kind of process here because you know this is there's the sacred big earlobe that's common to Buddha and you uh, or I uh, start to think you know this is the one of the greatest lessons of the Buddha is uh, the lesson of impermanence you know and what am I doing? I'm, I'm adding this, uh, I'm adding this sealer to it to, to uh, make it <laughs> more long-lasting, right? More to uh, durable, durable eyes. And uh, so I recognize that, you know, I'm, I'm entering this struggle, you know, with impermanence, you know, but isn't that what we all do, right? We, even if we're learning about impermanence, we're doing it from a place of practiced challenge to impermanence. And so I'm not personally trying to instill permanence here, but some durability, a lengthening of the availability of the lessons of the Buddha. You know, like maybe this statue lasts three more years because of what I'm doing, but in that third year, somebody comes to the teachings in part because of the statue, and that person figures things out I couldn't or embodies things I had only figured out or whatever but their karma is ready for what mine hadn't been or yours hadn't been so I'm just trying to see if I can help this last a bit longer so that it's present for whomever would be there then It's leaning over the edge of the table, and this Buddha may very well just fall and break right now as I talk about impermanence, especially as it grows a little slipperier. And so, Sri Guru Nu Charana Saro Jara Jara Nijamona Mukana Sudha. And the first line in the Hanuman Chalisa, you know, the first. You know, two percent or one and a half percent, I guess. It's talking about clearing the mirror of your heart, you know. Like, what you see in the mirror is not you. And cleaning the mirror is not cleaning yourself. Right? Like, when you're clearing your heart, cleaning your heart isn't really your heart, right? That's just our language. You're clearing what's in the way or what's reflected in. The heart is pure. The heart is perhaps lost or occluded or forgot or buried or seen through a different lens. But there is ultimately impermanence beneath this. There is ultimately perfection beneath this. Whether or not I see it 
or remember it. Hi, sweetie. So, you know, you're kind of cleaning the face here or, or rubbing the face the way you might a child, you know, of your own. Like, with so much love. You know, not the way you clean a spatula in the sink. Maybe as effective in a prosaic way, <laughs> equally clean, but it's not all you're doing when you're cleaning your child's face, you know, or your teacher's feet, for that matter. Feeling the mala and the mudra here, the fall of the robes, and I think that we're done. I'm just gonna finish on the third eye and the heart and the lower dantian. And uh, that is our little uh, meditation. going to check the directions because that makes for and I'll come back in a white moth in a half hour which is about what I remember and uh that is our uh, so that is our uh, uh, Buddha uh, uh, application <laughs> a Buddhist application I guess meditation so thank you very much